Alright, hey there fellow coder, welcome to this ongoing series where we are building a React plus Spring Boot full stack web application from scratch. In this one, we are going to be diving into more of the React end of things where we are going to uh, tweak our route. So in the previous video, we talked about what a route is and how to set up different routes inside of your application, such that when you go to one web page versus another, it'll render different views. But we did not talk about setting up a private route, which means uh, a route or a path that is protected, whereby you have to be logged in before you're allowed to see that particular view. So for example, if you want to get into a dashboard, um, before you can go into your dashboard, you need to log in first. And if you haven't logged in, it'll redirect you to a login page. That is essentially the idea of a, of a protected route, and we'll be diving into that in today's lesson. So if that is of interest, stick around. All right, fellow coder, let's dive into this lesson. So in order to get started, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if we go to like slash dashboard and hit enter, um, it should be able to render the dashboard screen. I must have changed some code or something, so it's not compiling right now. Um, where is it? Console, we have, uh, oh, we don't have an error. It says failed to load content uh, 404, not found. Did I spell dashboard wrong? Oh, I put dash <laughs> board. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah, we technically shouldn't be able to uh, see the dashboard if we don't have our uh, JSON web token initialized. So the first thing, the first thing I'm going to do is comment out this code, which um, essentially fetches a JSON web token automatically with a predetermined username and password, which is not entirely the, uh, correct. That's not exactly how apps work in this world. Um, now I'm going to go and delete from the application tab. I'm going to delete our, our JWT that's been generated. Okay, so now we essentially don't have a JWT. So if I go back to the dashboard, you see it just allows us in. It says the JWT value is blank. This is where, in my opinion, this is not a proper state. Uh, it should not allow us into a dashboard if we haven't logged in yet. Okay, so what we wanted to do ideally is redirect us to a login page and say, hey, you need to log in. So the first thing we can do is create sort of a login component or a login screen component. So I'll create a new folder called login. <clears throat> Oop, I already have it in here. I started doing it, um, so I created that. And then let's insert a new file called index.js. And in here we can do the uh, code snippet react uh, stateless component RSC and hit enter. And then we'll call this login. Okay, so this is just going to be the login view, the login page. So uh, we'll have a div, and in here we'll have like an input or a, a label, um, which will say username, and the input type will be, I don't know, email address or something like that, and the ID will be username or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the label will say for, I think it's HTML for, um, what's it called? Username. That way when you click on the label, it'll... Uh, highlight the email uh, uh, box. That's sort of what that HTML4 is used for. It's just a convenience thing, that's all. We'll have another div. Now this is going to complain, right, because we have to wrap all of this in one div. Actually, teaching opportunity. Um, there needs to be one parent element, which you might be, you know, um, tempted to put a div as the parent, but then you sort of have a div within a div, and that's not necessarily um, the best uh, experience uh, in terms of laying things out. So what you can actually do is you can delete the stuff inside like this. And this is called a, uh, a React fragment, okay? So just an empty empty um, uh, brackets here is a React fragment, uh, which will essentially not render anything um, in terms of the tag itself uh, on the front end. So you won't have to have a nested div for no reason. You won't have to have divs on divs on divs. Uh, this will essentially just ignore um, this on the front end and it'll just render these divs. So in other words, we can make our code quote unquote compile with um, React and then not have to have, you know, empty divs doing nothing really. So, okay, so now we can have two divs. So one here and then we'll do another label and input for the password. So password password, uh, this will be password type and password for the ID. 
Cool, so now we have a login view. That's what we can redirect to once we force them to redirect if they're not allowed to log in. Um, but okay, so we have this view and if you wanna see it, we can go into here and add it in our app.js. We can put another <clears throat> route here down at the bottom and say path, you know, login. And the element that it renders will be our login element that we just created. Enter, we'll import it like that. Um, so if we go to login, there it is. Username, password does not look very nice. Does not look sexy in any way, shape or form, but that's okay. We're not going for sexy look and feel right now. We are just going for functionality. We'll make it look better in a moment, uh, in a moment, in a future video. So cool. We have a login page again. It doesn't do anything here. It's really just for show, but at least we can show that we are actually redirecting to a login page once we get our private route concept set up. So because I'm using React Router version 6, um, how do we do this? How do we create a private route? Well, in version 6, uh, there's pretty a pretty simple way of doing it. You go to, um, I created a private route folder, okay? So a private route will be our own custom object that we create. So I'll create a private route, a new file in here, again, index.js, and we'll create a React stateless component, okay? This will be called private route. <clears throat> Now the private route takes an input, okay? So the input is gonna be what they call the children. Okay, so the children are the props um, that are passed in and I'll show you what those children are in a moment. And um, so when we pass in those children, uh, basically what we want the private route to do is we want it to allow us through to render the children. Um, again, we'll, we'll see those in a moment. We want to render the children on the screen if we are authenticated. And if we're not authenticated, we want to return a uh, uh, return a, um, a redirect us to the what you call it login page. Okay. So how we can do that for now is we can leverage our you know JWT um, uh, what you call it value inside of our um, local storage. So we can use local state. Okay. Default value empty. The key is called JWT. So that will grab the JWT from the uh, local storage. For now, it's not gonna do anything that dramatic other than check and see if there is a JWT initialized, okay? If it is stored um, in the, uh, what you call it, local storage, right? So basically what we could say is, hey, is JWT valid? Is it, not, not I shouldn't say valid, is JWT present? Okay, you can do that by saying JWT, JWT question mark. This is called a ternary operator. It's kind of like an if statement. You're kind of saying if JWT, then do this. What do you want to do? You want to return the children. Otherwise, and we mark that with a colon, we want to return a different component. We want to return something called navigate. Navigate comes from React Router DOM, which is the router, you know, version six. And we want to navigate, what is it, navigate to? Navigate to something. What do you want to navigate to? We want to navigate to the uh, login screen. I think it's just slash login. And then that's it. Oops, I misspelled children. Children. Okay. <coughs> so that's more or less it. We'll test it out, make sure it works. But that's the, the, the gist of what's going on here. We check and see if JWT is present. If it is, then we render the children. Now, obviously, this is a bit, a bit too um, naive, right? We're not validating the JSON web token. We're not doing anything to see if it's an actual legitimate uh, JSON web token. We're just seeing if there's a value assigned to it. That's all we're doing here. So there's more work needed to make this, uh, you know, a bit more robust, um, but this will do for now. So now with the private route object, how do we use it, right? <clears throat> we can go back to our app.js where we have defined the route for the dashboard. So the dashboard is what we want to protect. We want this to become a private route. So we can do that by playing around with the element that is returned. So instead of just blindly returning the dashboard element, which is exactly what we don't want to do, we want to be a little bit more picky with our dashboard, okay? We want to wrap it in our private route uh, component that we just created. You see what I've done here? I've wrapped dashboard in the private route component. So what's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, <clears throat> inside of a private route, you're going to pass some children, or in this case, a child, to the private route component, right? We're gonna pass a child called dashboard. It's a dashboard component. So inside a private route, when we click on it, 
we're passing in right here the children. In this case, it's just one child, but it's the same concept. We're passing in that as a property to the private route um, right here because it's nested within the private route. So that's where the, the value of children gets set. And then we're gonna say, hey, if we have a JSON web token, then just return children, meaning just return the dashboard uh, view, which is what we were doing earlier. But here's the curveball: If we do not have a JSON web token, instead of returning the children, which is the child that we passed in, the dashboard component, instead of returning the dashboard component, this private route ob uh, function is going to, or I should say uh, stateless component, is going to return the navigate um, uh, component, which comes from React Router DOM, and hopefully send it to the login page. Okay, so now let's test it out. Basically, we do not have, I believe, we don't have any JWT. You can barely see this, but in the application tab in local storage, we have an empty value for JWT. Oops. So if I try to load up dashboard, you see it redirects me to the login screen, right? You can, it's a little bit, you know, didn't really see it that well. Let me go to the home page. So homepage, it lets me through, even though I'm not logged in, I don't have a JSON web token, it lets me through. And if I go to dashboard, it tries to run a dashboard, but nope, it redirects me to the login screen. So now we have successfully implemented, uh, I should say mostly successfully implemented um, uh, the private route object. Again, we will need to um, extend this functionality a little bit more to make sure that, you know, it's not just any value uh, of a JSON web token. We need to just make sure that we have a valid JSON token, right? We we want to make sure that it was properly passed from the back end and, and installed into our local storage. Um, otherwise, you know, people can try to play around with, with things and, and um, anyway. So, Cool, that is more or less it for this one. If you liked it, give it a uh, thumbs up for this video. Um, if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to the channel. There probably is a little round uh, circle above me where you can click to subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate it. And especially if you wanna see more videos in this series, this is like video, I don't know, 13 or 14 or something in this series. Um, one of the best ways to get access to them is to subscribe to the channel, obviously, and you will get notified uh, if you click that notification bell. So hopefully you will do that. And I look forward to creating the next video for you very, very soon. So take care of yourself as always. Happy learning and bye for now.